Okay, everybody, today we're going to be seeing if you can actually predict chaos. Hey, Google, it's science time. It says on Wikipedia that on top of Mount Everest, water boils at 160 degrees Fahrenheit. Thanks, Google. And I'd like to thank Google for sponsoring this awesome video today. So the Google Assistant team and I have teamed up to create this awesome room today. So we've fully automated the room using the Google Assistant and we're going to be using it throughout our experiment today. So one cool thing that you can get the Google Assistant to do is to flip a coin for you. Hey Google, flip a coin. All right. It's heads. As opposed to just flipping a coin by yourself. Tells. However, actually neither of these methods of flipping a coin are random. For example, if I knew the initial linear and angular momentum of the coin and the amount of wind resistance, I could calculate exactly how the coin would land every single time. There's nothing random about it. Flipping a coin is completely deterministic. The same goes for flipping a coin using a pseudo-random number generator like the Google Assistant uses. So they use a function that's very predictable and it, it actually produces the same results every time you use it only that it has an initial condition that is unknown to the people using it. But if you did know those initial starting numbers, then you could predict perfectly every time what the random number generator would output. For example, I can make a simple pseudo-random coin flipping algorithm by using the digits of pi. If the digit is odd, it's heads. If it's even, it's tails. So I just write out the digits of pi, and every time someone asks me to flip a coin, I just look at the next digit of pi in the column, and tell them the result based on whether it's odd or even. Now to someone who doesn't know the algorithm, it seems like it's random with no repeating pattern whatsoever. But if you just knew that I was using the digits of pi and whether they were odd or even, then you would know what was going on and everything I was going to say every single time. So the more correct term for this is actually not a random system, but a chaotic system. And a chaotic system is one that appears random, but simply because we don't know all the information to predict the results. So before we do my next experiment, I programmed the Google Assistant to help warn my wife when an experiment's about to begin. Hey Google, let's do a safety check. Don't forget to wear your safety glasses. Okay. Check. You might hear a boom. Let's do this. Okay, so I have here something that's called a double pendulum. And what a double pendulum is, is it's like a normal pendulum, but instead of one degree of freedom, it has two degrees of freedom. And that means that you can create an amazingly chaotic system. So you can start it in any position and give it a spin. And it starts to do its own thing after that and make its own pattern. Hey Google, dim the lights. So now with it dark, you can see that if we have a black light, we can make this amazing pattern on the back and we can actually show the chaotic system in action. And so I've defined chaos and randomness in two different ways. Chaos is a thing that's determined. It's deterministic, meaning that if you knew everything, everything about the initial conditions, you could predict what will happen in the future. Whereas randomness is completely unpredictable. You can never predict what will happen to a specific thing. So what is a truly random system? Well, the only truly random systems are quantum mechanical based systems. So what I have here is some metal rods that have thorium in them. Hey Google, what's the half-life of thorium? The most stable isotope, 232th, has a half-life of 14.05 billion years. And so we can predict very well how many atoms will decay over time, but we can never say with exact certainty when that decay will occur. But actually for chaotic systems and random systems, you can still use statistics to predict what you think what that will happen on a large grand scale. Let me show you what I mean. One example of a chaotic system is one like this. So I have some metal beads up here, and as they fall down, they hit these little pegs. But when you drop a lot of balls, it becomes easier to predict where the average ball will land. And what's interesting about this is there's no specific thing telling the balls to fall in this order, but when you get a bunch of chaotic motions all working together, 
they end up to produce a very predictable curve. In fact, one of my favorite quotes about this subject by the statistician Sir Francis Galton, who invented the Galton board that I'm showing here, he said that whenever a large sample of chaotic elements are taken in hand, an unsuspected and most beautiful form of regularity proves to have been latent all along. So that quote is actually really interesting. So what it says is that the more chaotic a system is, the more predictable it actually is. And that even applies to human behavior. So even though we make individual decisions, and it seems like we're making individual decisions, we're actually very predictable in what we do. In fact, scientists have found that we're 93% predictable in almost every aspect of our life. If you take a large enough population of humans, it doesn't mat matter age, ethnicity, gender, we're really predictable. We all do the same things. And so we as humans are completely random and unpredictable, yet we're very predictable. And I'd like to thank Google again for sponsoring this video and the awesome Google Assistant team that helped me build this awesome lab and helped me program the Google Assistant to do these awesome queries. And remember to share in the comment section below and on your social channels how you're using the Google Assistant with the hashtag HeyGoogle. And remember to click the link in the description to learn how to try this at home with the Google Assistant. Hey Google, repeat after me. Thanks for watching the Action Lab. If you haven't subscribed yet, remember to hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching the Action Lab. If you haven't subscribed yet, remember to hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. See you next time.